Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest 6 with a sound canvas. So we're about to uh, approach the Wing in One City and then uh, get sent into the catacombs again. Now let's go. Look, an intru- How? I- That- I- No this- But- With what trickery? Only the the cliffs. Yes, Ariel. We have just the pro the minute a delay. I will not. Hmm. I am ready. Very well. I wish screens like this could be skipped. Why did you and you bravery? We shall we own the catac it seemed. Okay, here we are. So we we'll take the same route as before. Well, I'm gonna be skipping uh, side things like the fake Celeste and so forth. This time I'm gonna go over here. And up here we find a rather gruesome scene. The remains of several unfortunate souls haunt the room. These bones seem more recent than the ancient catacomb bones that Alexander has seen so far. Perhaps they were victims of the Minotaur. Or perhaps they died while wandering lost in the maze. Three of the skeletons are completely intact. But there's also this. A lone skull lies on the ground among the skeletons. Where the skull came from is a mystery, since the other remains seem to have their skulls intact. Well, we're going to need it. Alexander picks up the skull. Puzzle floor. I have this pretty much memorized. Um, come on. And you have to step on that blank square before you go to the exit, otherwise, it doesn't make sense, but. Uh, Oh, wait, this is the wrong way. Oh, <laughs> why? I guess we're going to see this after all. Uh, as I was saying, uh, you get the spike trap thing. Alexander. Again, this is the way forward, but we're going to take a trip this way. Alexander hears that. I'll pay close attention when I enter this next room. You see that right there? Niches in the wall. Alexander notices that this skeleton has old coins over its eyes. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. I don't know if any of you have heard of the uh, a tradition of uh, putting coins over the eyes of a body to pay for uh, passage. It's a trap. The door kind of and a the clue ceiling is to uh, something. 
The brick. Yeah. In a desperate move. The the mechanism. The trap is. Here, um, <clears throat> I missed a death. Alexander seems to have fallen to wherever he is. The All right, uh, I'm gonna save. Yeah, watch what happens. Alexander hears the scrabble of hooves in the dark room. Hey. Hello? Tickets open. Next. Caught in the dark, Alexander? <laughs> That's kind of... Uh, funny in a dark way. All right. Oh, wait, I just restored that twice. Um, okay, so we light our tinderbox. Alexander. Aha! So. Alexander. I'm gonna go this way. Did I go the other way last time? I don't remember. Lady Sol You there I ask as the Minotaur until he can back now where to lit Alexander No kill Now The Minotaur. Have you? No, I. Uh, let's see. I can't. Thank you. That's. The Winged Ones. Lady Celeste. I'm. Yes. Now bring. Ah, ah. I, I am a bl It is all. I have my god. I don't. I think. I think I'm going to not skip all of this. Hail to thee, great. Defeated the Minotaur. So this is the Princess Cosima. Whatever. Ah, of course, the princess. That. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She's a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers. And yours to try to redeem her. How? How? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one. But rather, like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can. But what will actually come to pass is up to you. Oh, we're taking a long path I this time. I any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle. 
us. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. Remember that. But before this final struggle, there is more than one way into this. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh! Oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the Dark Force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the Druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, Great Oracle. We're actually going to use that uh, sacred water this time. Quite soon, in fact. Okay. So. Alexander. Here's the Isle of Mists. Alexander feels a strange. From the north. So first of all, from the east, I'm gonna grab a coal. Alexander and the scythe. Alexander takes the scythe. And now, going back to the uh, Isle of Wonder for the umpteenth time. And now another thing has appeared. There's a small bottle on the coffee table. It bears a label that reads, Drink Me. Oh. Let's pick it up. Alexander picks up the bottle. Where is it? The little bottle contains some sort of potion and bears a label saying, Drink Me. That's rather forward of it. Well, um, I'm sure nothing can go wrong, but just in case. Alexander decides to swallow the potion in the bottle labeled Drink Me to see what happens. <laughs> Suddenly, his vision fades to black. His lungs become too heavy to breathe. His heartbeat slows. Well, another death, then right? Beats no more. Suddenly, his heart takes a lurch, then beats strong. Or not. His chest heaves like that of a newborn. 
His vision clears, and Alexander feels fine. Phew. For a minute there, I thought... What if someone else had seen me and thought... Sounds! Yes, what if someone else had seen him? Or us, or whatever. Uh... Let's keep that in mind. Oh. Also, while we're here, we need to... We want to do this. You'll see why. Alexander gives one of the baby's tears a bottle of milk. The other baby's tears seem to resent Alexander's gift for some reason. Tears, huh? Now, if you recall... Ah, uh, that crying. Okay, uh... <laughs> yeah, make rain spell. If you drop salt water, not from the sea. Well, hey, there's some salt water. One vial sacred water. And falling water. Now, where have we seen falling water? Now, we don't have a uh, teacup. Or, no, we do have a teacup, but... Uh, this is what we have to use, trust me. Alexander collects some of the baby's tears in the old hunter's lamp. Alright, now let's get out of here. Ah, much better. Let's put the, uh... sacred water in. Alexander pours the contents of the oracle's vial into the hunter's lamp with the baby's tears. The vial, now empty of its sacred fluid, disintegrates. And now let's go to the Isle of the Beast. Alexander... And do that thing. Alexander... Alexander decides to pass through the gate. The magic arrow... Alexander walks... But the rose hedges on either side of the path send... Okay, we know what to do here. Just skip all the narration. And there we are. And yes, we know. Just skip all of this. Skip, skip, skip. It's my fa- I shall- Yes, your t- It's funny that we get points for dooming ourselves, so to speak. Um, we need a rose. Alexander, you will always have our- And to aid you, accept my mirror. Now that my life is no longer hung in false shadows, I have no need for it. Give it to someone with nothing to fear from the truth it reveals. Thank you. I wish you both well. Come, beauty. Okay, so yeah, we got the mirror, we're gonna need it later, uh, but for right now, we have falling water. Oh, where's that land? Alexander fills the hunter's lamp to the brim with the fountain water. And now, we can cast our first spell. Ah, come on. Where'd it go? Turn the 
page. There we go. Now let's cast it. Alexander prepares to enchant the hunter's lamp with the Make Rain spell incantation. Clouds of thunder, shafts of light, come and sup with me tonight. Waters three have I for tea, brew a tempest now for me. The lamp in Alexander's hand gives a little perk. He hopes the spell works despite his makeshift teapot. Okay. Now let's get another rose. Alexander. T we don't actually. Uh, we don't need it, but it gives us more points. Uh, Alexander. Alexander holds out the rose, hoping that the bird will deliver it to Cosima. The Nightingale takes the rose and heads for the castle once more. A white rose, how beautiful! It must be from Alexander. How I wish that I could see him with my own eyes, but Abdul will never allow it. He only risks capture by sending me these things, dear to my heart though they are. Fly elsewhere, my pretty friend. Do not endanger Prince Alexander again by taking tokens from his hand. Forgive me, Alexander, and forget me. I cannot return your love for fear that I shall never leave this castle again. Alexander waits in vain for Cosima's nightingale to return, but the bird does not. Could there be something wrong? Or does Cosima simply not welcome his attentions further? Well, that's a little sad, but uh, we know it'll work out in the end. One last thing. Bear with me. It's probably going to go over a half hour mark, but uh, I think it's the best way to end the uh, episode. Now that we have the Make Rain spell, Great gods, did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place, but as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh, Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander. 
water starts to feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage. Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Egad! Something's really percolating! The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about... Boiling! Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. That man is a powerful nature wizard. By the sacred oak, let him down! Apologize for our rude welcoming committee. We've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wizir Al Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. She told me of two souls in unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the Realm of the Dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No. And yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already past. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it, a young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. Nightmare sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow, the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the knight. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, that is a blacker matter still. To the Druids, he is Samhain, Lord of coldness and despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless. Robbed of sleep, robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. 
It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Uh, interesting. Now, look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you're bent on your course, you'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. <sighs> May your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdroid. Yeah, interesting is not the word for it. So, uh, next time we're going to seek out this realm of the dead. Look forward to it. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>